Hello, good evening and welcome to Become a Better Man. My name is Tunde Dyson. Uh, thank you for being part of tonight's program. Uh, my voice is a bit somehow because uh, I've been under the weather for some days. But I didn't want to miss today's program. So here we are. We're going to continue with what we started last week about setting the foundation for the new year we're going to be looking at living a life by design rather than by default living a life that you you put together yourself you thought about it you planned about it you put all the ingredients together you map the route you determine the destination you put necessary tools in place to lead you to where you're going. And so we're going to be looking at living a life of design rather than a life of, of default. And what does that really mean? Simply put, there are two ways to live a life, to do anything. It's either you are directed or you are driven. It's either you are doing it by design deliberately or you're doing it by default because if you don't make a decision for yourself for instance you immediately by default give that authority to somebody else to make that decision for you and now they will make the decision but whether it is for your best interest in your best interest to to help you, to be with you, to support you, to guide you into all the things you want, it's a different story. But if you choose yourself, if you make the decision yourself, if you plan it and, and set things in place and put all the necessary help that you will need, already establish where they are, how to access them and all of that, when you do all of that, then you go and look on the inside of yourself and find the strength, find the courage, find the conviction of your heart to live a life that is in line with your purpose, with your destiny, with your, your assignment in life. Because I strongly believe that none of us are here by accident. There's a reason why you are here. There's a purpose while I'm here. There's a, there is a, a, a vacuum that only you can occupy, that only I can fulfill. There is a place that is set just for you and just for me. So our job is to find that hole and plug ourselves into it. And so part of that is you choosing to say, okay, if my calling, if my purpose in life is to be this, then... I need to start working towards fulfilling that purpose rather than just running about, which a lot of us we've done up till now, including myself, where we've tried this, we've gone there, we've been there, we've dabbled into different things. And while some of them may feel right and you may enjoy, you may even make some money out of it, you may feel like this is it for you. But something deep inside of you tells you, no, this is not it. There is more to you than this. This is far, far from what you are meant to be doing. Now, it doesn't mean it's below your, your level or your standard. It doesn't mean it is bad. It doesn't mean it is not profitable. But it's not just about the, the financial reward that you will use to determine whether this is your lane or not. It is that, that sense of fulfillment, that inside sense of accomplishment that you can't even put, your, put a price on it, you can't put your hand on it, but something on the inside just makes you feel happy. You just feel, yes, this is my purpose. And so the life that you and I must must plan to live, especially in this new year and in, in this new decade, should be a life that is, that is devoid of all the trials and errors and we'll try this and oh, that would we'll do well. No, you, we need to find what is my purpose and then design a life that goes along the line of that purpose. 
And the thing with designing your life is it doesn't mean that in the course of you designing it, you just sit down and not do anything else. In fact, you will find that some of your best designs will come when you are in the crucible of, 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 of going through, when you are being pressed and being crushed and everything seems like it's working against you. All those things can come together to put you in a place where you have to re-examine yourself, where you have to reassess your life, where you have to pour it all down and, and, and spread it all out so that you can start to align them, put your dogs in a row, as they say, towards finding what is my purpose. And once you establish that, then you start putting the bricks in place, putting the mortar on it, putting the cement on it, putting the roof on it, putting the, the, the slates on the roof. And before you know it, your life starts to come together even if at that time it's not producing all the money you need, all the claim, the fame you, 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 crave, you crave, and all the accolades that you want, but something on the inside tells you, this is it. This is it. This is, this is me. This is my purpose. This is my reason. This is why I'm here. And so, living a life of desire or living a life by design rather than by default, if nothing else, should be a central theme in what we do going forward, especially in this new year. But then the question is, this is not new to me. What I'm saying now is not new to all of us. We've heard about it, we've talked about it, we've planned about it, we've done everything about it. But somehow, we go this far, we go this to this extent, and then it falls down. And then we stop, and then we get diverted, and then we get distracted, and then we just don't follow it through. And so the question is why? Why? And when I... Again, like I said, I'm a living example of what I'm talking about, so I'm not, it's not like I'm exempted. When I used my life, for instance, to, to try and examine why is this, this so? Why is this happening year in, year out? Why does it seem like we're just going round in circle? Why are we not moving forward? Why am I not feeling fulfilled and, and established and, and going in the direction of that I know? My life should be going. The key factor that I can, I can put my finger on now, it may not be for you, but the key factor that I could put my finger on and I can see in the life, in the lives of others, the key issue is fear. Fear. We're all afraid. I, I, and, and it has so so become prevalent amongst us that we have even come to almost accepting fear as a natural part of life when it shouldn't be. Let me ask you, have you ever hold back from making a change or taking a chance that is just within your grip, just right there in your hand. And instead of just reaching out and grabbing it, you reach out and then you, uh, you pull back. Have you ever been afraid of what might happen if you take that step, if you step out, if you say that, if you reach out? Have you, stayed, have you ever stayed silent when there was something you really wanted to say that you just feel that I need to say this, but you just pull back? Have you ever been scared because you don't want to ruffle some people's feather? You don't want people to feel who you think you are. 
You don't want people to reject you. You don't want people to, to disown you and turn their backs on you. Have you ever thought to yourself, when it's all said and done, I wish I just had the guts to go through with her. I wish I just had the courage. I wish I just said it. I wish I just reached out. Good news. You're not alone. You are not alone. We are all guilty of all of this and many more. Because we're human beings, we are wired naturally to be careful, to be cautious. But you see, just because we have that tendency, it's not an excuse to live in that zone of nearly, of almost. We tend to stay away from situations that exposes us to the possibilities of failure. But you see, life in itself is a product of knowing that there is the tendency, there is the possibility of failure and yet still doing it. We are afraid of being exposed to losing face, losing credibility, losing, losing followership. For people to look at you and say, oh, come on, how can you be so stupid? How can you be so foolish to even think that way, not to talk of doing it? And so because of all of that inhibitions, we hold ourselves back from doing what we know to do, what we're supposed to do, what we should do, what we, we have to do to get to that other side. Our natural human desire for safety, for certainty, for making sure it is solid, for crossing the T's and dotting the I's, our natural desire for that has pitted us against our desire which is also a natural desire for growth and adventure. We don't want to be broken. We don't want to be disgraced. We don't want to be seen as being stupid or foolish. We don't want to lose face. We don't want people to reject us. And so we hold back from tempting or attempting, from stepping out, from doing what we think of what we know we should do. But at the same time, we feel we need, there is, a, there is a hunger on the inside that is crying out for growth. There is a longing in our hearts that is reaching out for adventure. But you see, you can't you can have it both ways. You are either going to save your face and stay in your nearly made it life, or you're going to step out and say, if I perish, I perish. But one thing I know, I am out of this, 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 this dead end. I am coming out of this low debate. I am stepping out of this environment. Because sometimes what we call comfort zone, what we call a, a familiar zone, they are the the snares that are holding us back. And sometimes you need to peel off that duvet. Oh, it's cold outside. I mean, the winter is biting. So the tendency, the natural tendency is to pull the duvet over and turn the other side and, and just cuddle yourself and have one more hour of sleep. That is the natural tendency. But then something on the inside tells you, well, maybe you, you need to find another job because your boss is waiting for you in the office. Maybe you need to find another school because now your, your exams are is starting in another hour. And if you fail this time, that's it. And so we, we choose to peel the duvet off, off, off our faces, off our heads, off our bodies, and step out, wrapped up, shivering and quaking in that winter, falling and, and standing because there is something else on the other side 
that we feel is more valuable than sleeping and snoring on that cozy bed. And it's exactly the same thing with the other aspects of our lives. We often say to ourselves, if only I had the courage. If only I had the courage. If only I had the courage. As if courage is something you can go to Sainsbury and buy. Or go to uh, uh, the doctor and say, can you give me three tablets of courage? Courage is not like that. Courage is something that we all have. Courage is like the muscle. We all have it. It's what you do with it that will determine how it shapes out for you. Because within you and I lies all of the courage that we will ever need to become everything that we need to become. Let me ask you. You think you didn't need courage to step out this morning. You think you didn't need courage to get into your office this morning and sat on that seat. What, why, what gives you the impression that that seat will carry you? But something on the inside tells you it's able to carry my weight. So you sat on it. That is courage. And if we will exercise courage in, in little things like that, why not in your life? Why not in my life? Within us, within you and I lies all the courage that we will ever need to make the change that we need, to take the chance that we, have, we must take, to step out and go apply for that job or start that business or start that relationship or, or move into that neighborhood or, or, or start that book that you've been talking about writing since Noah was a boy. All you have is within you and it's called courage to start. The challenge for all of us is that many of us, we have not learned how to access this courage, this port of courage. And until you do that, until we access it, until we understand it, until we tap into this reservoir, we will always live a life of design, of, of default, rather than a life of design. Each time, each time you act in the presence of fear, each time you exercise and you let your courage the courageous aspect of you, each time you let it come forth and, and, and take presence, presence, take preeminence in the face of fear, what you've just done is you've just diluted the power of fear and you've just grown a little bit taller, a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, a little bit bolder. And now you are moving towards that point where your life is your life, not the one somebody handed over to you. I know we've all heard the, the slogans and bought the t-shirt and the stickers and the this and the that, or just do it, uh, live long, live strong, be brave and all of that, which is great. All those are reminders, but ultimately, ultimately, what would determine whether you are courageous or not is not the sticker, it's not the t-shirt, it's not the emblem, it's on the inside. And it is you reaching deep onto that inside and dragging it up. And that is why this year, 2020, has to be a year that differentiates you from all the other years where people will look at you and, say, and they say, what has changed? So well, nothing has changed except that I am living my life. I am living a life that I have chosen. Not the one that others and circumstances and situations and this and that. Not the one they have conspired to, to hand over to you. Because for as long as you allow other things and other people to choose your life, to design your life, to program your life, you you just be 
enslaved to them. But the good news is this. You and I have what it takes to be courageous, to live a life of desire rather than a life of default. All we have to do is to, to be audacious enough to take that leap of faith, to, to look at that, that gap between where you are and where you need to be, and rather than being, being, being stricken with fear of, look at that gap, but to look at it and say, that is what I need to take care of so that I can be where I'm going to be. And so tonight, I'm, we're going to look at some of the things that you can do, some of the things that we can do, some of the ways by which we can begin to tap into this, this, this courage. Hi, Debbie. Long time. Happy New Year. We have to find a way by which we tap into it and, and start pushing ourselves into a life. That is meant for us, not that is handed to us. The reality is, we don't have a spare life. This is it. 2019, in all of its challenges and glory, it's gone forever. Ever and ever. It won't come back again. But you and I have the opportunity. We have the privilege, we have the ability, we have the, the, the capacity to say, well, whatever 2019 refused to hand over, 2020, you are going to pay for it because I'm going to get everything out of you that I didn't get out of 2019. So what do you need to do? What do we need to, what do we have to do? What must we do, therefore, to start to design our lives? And let me help you. 80, 90% of everything we need to do is nothing to do with the outside. It's on the inside. It's within us. So we don't need to travel to, to, to the other part of the world to do it. We can do it even starting from this very minute. Because it's within you and I. So the first thing that you need to do, the first ingredient or the first tool, the first step towards building a life that you design for yourself is that you must have a why. <coughs> Excuse me. You must have a why. You must know your why. Why? Why do I have to have a, a life that is designed? Why can't I just settle for the one that is by default? After all, it's already set. Just leave it. Why? 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 Somebody once said, when your why is strong enough, the how will manifest itself. Nothing worthwhile is accomplished with a guarantee of success. I'll say that again. Nothing worthwhile. Nothing that is worth your time, your effort, your, your, your resources, your everything that is accomplished with a guarantee of success. Even the Bible said nobody hopes for something that they can see. So start by asking yourself, why? Why should I leave this comfort zone that I'm, I'm, I'm used to? I know when the bell will ring. I know when the bus will come. I know when lunch time is. I know when uh, uh, the, the finishing time is. I know what time I'll get home. I know by the time I open the front door, Emma Day will be starting. I want everything. Why should I leave that to pursue something that is... Neither here nor there. I'm not even sure if I can make it to my front door. Why? Because until you know why, you won't be able to design an answer to it. Because the why is a, is a, a, a it's like a, it's like a, a stick that will keep poking you. 
he will keep poking you and poking you and not giving you the the the, the comfort of sitting down and and be, be comfortable no he pokes you why 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 when you know your why when you know the reason when you have a good reason to do something the power and the ability to do it will come from somewhere and from somewhere But finding the courage to ask that question, finding the courage to take the necessary risks and the demand that will bring you to answering it, you have to be clear about why are you doing what you're doing in the first place? Why do you want to live a life that is designed by you rather than the one that is handed to you by default? Why should I take the risk? Why should I take this risk? There's no guarantee of success. Why should I step out when I'm not even sure somebody will buy the product? Why should I leave this, 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 the comfort of this bed when there is no guarantee that the buses will be running today because of the weather? Why, why, why? The risk of life is the engine that keeps the is the is the power rather that keeps the engine of life revving. Risk. Risk. Risk is is the toll that life charges each and every one of us on our journey to any meaningful endeavor. It's like traveling from 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 this is from the, the from one side of Kent to the other side, you have to go through the Dartford Tunnel. You have to pay a toll or else you get a, a penalty charge. That is the that is life. It is the that the risk is the toll, is the penalty, is the is the is the is the, is the, the token that you and I must pay to life. To tell life, to send a message to life that what's on the other side is more meaningful to me than what's on this side. And I'm willing to pay for whatever it costs to get to the other side. Naturally, as human beings, we are wired. We are wired to, save, to stay comfort. We are wired to focus more on what we have to lose than what we stand to gain. I'll say that again. Human beings, the way our brain, our brains and our system and everything about us, the way it works, every time it compares two things, it's looking more, it's paying more attention to what we stand to lose than what we stand to gain. And that is why many of us will err on the side of caution. I would rather not lose the, the comfort of my sleep just in case the bus don't show up. But then somebody will leave the house, step out, and then the bus is there. Even if the bus is not there, it's like, well, I've left the house now, I'll just walk to the office. And they'll get to the office and the, the, the managing director said, are you the only one here? So, well, it's a work day, so I'm here. And the mining director said, well, for your faithfulness, I'm rewarding you with three times promotion or this bonus or this or that. And then the rest of you will come on a sunny day and this man has changed level. And you're wondering what happened. Oh, he, you know, he, that man and the mining director, they're from the same village. No, it's not. It's because... He weighed what he stands to gain against what he stands to lose, and he chose. He made a choice to still step out and take that risk. So before you can find the courage to risk losing something, you have to be crystal clear about what it is you want to gain, what will accrue to you and I because of this attempt. Rather than what we stand to lose. The truth is, what you are going to lose, you've already lost it. Because you're already living a life that is not yours. 
But what you start to gain is enormous. What are you willing to lay your reputation, your pride, your status, your vulnerability? What are you willing to lay them on the line for in this year, 2020? Because it's only when your desire for something, when that transcends your desire for safety, that's only when you will rise above the fear that is hardwired into you to protect you from, from taking the risk. When your desire for something, your, your desire is so consuming that you can't, you can't even be bothered about what you stand to lose. Now you're a candidate for greater heights, for breakthroughs, for a life of design rather than a life by default. Number two. I said at the beginning that one of the things that we all have and have in abundance is, is fear. And that is what has stopped a lot of us from being who we could be, who we should be, and how we should be, where we should be, with whom we should be. But in order for you to live a life that is designed by you, you have to confront your fears. You have to confront your fears. Somebody said, whatever you don't confront, has a right to stay. Whatever you don't negotiate, you cannot have. Fear often gets a bad rap. Let me, let me say this way. Many of us, we, we just say, oh, it's because I'm, I'm afraid. It's because of fear. We, but you see, Fear has a purpose. There's a purpose to fear in itself. The sole purpose of fear is to alert you, is to alert me to potential threats to our safety. It's not to stop us. It's to just let you be aware. It's like this cup of hot water. As soon as I put my hand towards it, the heat there will tell me the cup is hot. That is the purpose of fear. It's just to alert me to the danger and the threat to my safety of not burning or scolding my, my fingers. It's not because they want to stop me or that it should stop me from picking up the cup and have a sip of my water. So fear has a purpose, is to alert you, to say, by the way, be aware that this is there. But what we have termed it to be, what we have taken it to be is that just that alert, just that warning, we take that as don't do it, don't go there, stop. No. What we've, what we've ended doing is living in the shadows of fear. Living in the dread of fear. Not, not fear itself, just the shadow of it. Just the dread, the thought of it. And it has paralyzed and crippled many people to the point that we are unable to distinguish between the fear that is serving us as an alert signal we have now brought it to a point where the fear is the one that is stifling us and keeping us from doing what we need to do. Fear has a purpose. is to alert us, to warn us, to let you know. It's like you're driving on the motorway. And as you're driving, the guy in front of you, the car in front of you, the vehicle in front of you, suddenly... Their hazard light goes on and they go like that. Does that mean you should stop? 
and turn around and head back to where you're coming from? No. It's just warning you to say, we need to slow down. People are slowing down in front. Don't run into my, into my boot and all of that. That's what fear is. It's an alert signal. But do you know why we have allowed fear to cripple us? In fact, psychologists have found four key mechanisms that undermine our ability to assess which of the fear is a sign, is a warning, and which one is a stop sign. Psychologists said there are four of them, and they have been able to distill them so that we can know which one is a sign and which one is a stop. Number one, we overestimate the size of the risk that we're facing. And so it makes the, the potential losses that we could experience, it makes it look bigger than it is. We overestimate and overemphasize the size of the risk. And so that makes what we're going to, what we may lose, what we could lose, it makes it look so enormous. And so you say to yourself, no, I, I, if, if it doesn't cost me all of that, please, I, I'd rather not do it. Number two. We exaggerate the potential consequences. Number one, we overestimate the size of it. Number two, we exaggerate the potential consequences. Oh, if I do that. Oh, if I don't do that. Oh, if I say that, they will just reject me. No, they won't reject you. If somebody has to reject you, if somebody will reject you because of one statement you made, maybe you were not in, in, any, in a relationship in the first place. Number three, we underestimate our ability to handle the risks that are involved. We underestimate ourselves. We underestimate our ability to handle the risks that are involved. We discount and we downplay or even deny that we have what it takes. But finally, we tell ourselves, inaction is better. Indecision is better. Not doing anything is better. Not making any move is better. That's a lie from the pit of hell. And so because of these four key ingredients, the result is we end up being overly cautious, unwilling to take the very risk that is needed to create this meaningful life that we need. Thank you, Debbie. It is the misinterpretation of fear that is stopping most of us. Misinterpretation of fear. But when you shine the light on your fears, when you point the searchlight on your fears, you realize the actual cost of your inaction. You understand you losing the grip of fear over your mind once you shine your light of understanding of knowledge of correct information once you do that everything is illuminated and that gives you the ability to accurately ask, assess the situation put the right perspective on every aspect of it and make the right decision for your life so number one what's your why Know your why. Number two, face your fear. Face your fear. Number three, trust your own capabilities. You want to live a life of design rather than a life of default. Trust your capabilities. 
You remember at the beginning I said, every, everything that you and I will need to live this life is already, in, we have, the potential is there. We just don't know it. We don't know how to access it. We're living in fear. We're condemning it. We're over-spiritualizing, over over, 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 over uh, emphasizing the risk and underestimating our, and our, our abilities. But you just trust in yourself. Trust yourself. You've trusted everybody else. You've trusted everyone else. So why don't you just trust yourself? Okay, ask yourself this question. What would I do if I were not being truly, if I were being truly courageous? If, I were, if there was no fear, no concern, no, nothing, no inhibition, if I'm not holding myself back, what would I do? Who would I be? Where would I go? How would I live? Ask yourself that question. Because it, it is only when we dare to trust ourselves. It's only when we dare to dream more. To dream more bravely. To stand up and look ourselves in the mirror and believe in what we see looking straight back at us. It's only then can we harness the potentials that reside within us and unleash our brilliance on every aspect of our lives and the world around us. But it starts with you trusting yourself. You know, you are the most trusted person that you know. You are the most trusted person that you know. So just trust yourself. How do you do that? Simple. Don't beat yourself over the head to the point where your head is broken. Don't condemn yourself to the point where you, you, you are now worthless. Don't, don't, don't underestimate what you are and what you carry to the point where even the good has now become the ugly. Every time you find yourself overwhelmed by your dream, by your focus, by what you want to do, by this life that you want to design, just pull back. Focus on what you can do per hour, per minute, per day, per week, per time. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. One bite at a time. The next one. Then the next day. Then the next week. Then the next day. Then the next week. And it's just one by one. Step by step. One foot in front of the other. One foot in front of the other. And before you know it, that journey that seemed like eternity you are halfway through it. Close your eyes. Just close your eyes. Breathe deep, deeply into yourself. Then start to imagine. Just let your mind travel. Let your mind just take you on a journey of no, no hold back, no inhibition, no restriction, no delay, no nothing. Just spread your wings and let the wind carry you to the utmost part of the world. And as you're soaring, as you're flying, as you're going over the hills and the mountains, open your heart and let your heart just map out what needs to be done. Let your heart just... Uh, let it just suck in the air, the freshness, the freedom, the, the everything that is in the air. Just take them in. 
Don't hold yourself back. Don't hold yourself back. It doesn't matter how daunting the challenge is. It does not matter how big the situation is. It is irrelevant how gigantous and magnanimous the issue is. When you compare it to your vision, it's a tiny thing. When you place it next to your vision, you will realize this is a child's play. Because within you lies all the resources, all the courage, all the power, all the access, all the permission that is required for you to make it a reality. And they take it one day at a time, one hour at a time, one week at a time, one process at a time. And before you know it, one courage at a time, result is in your hand. Trust yourself. Trust yourself. Number four. Embrace uncertainty. Embrace uncertainty. There are because you can't live in isolation in this world, there are things that are outside of your immediate and total control. Does that negate everything we've said? No. It is another element that you factor in into your process of designing your life. Even if you live by yourself, only in your house, there are things within that house that are outside of your control. For instance, you wake up in the middle of the night, you switch on the light, there is no light. And you're thinking, what's going on? Maybe it's the bulb. Then you went down to the corridor, you've switched on the light, there's no light. Or maybe it's the, maybe it's the, there's a switch somewhere. And you check in your switch box and everything is fine. The problem is from maybe six streets down the road and the electricity board, they've switched off the lights in that area to do the repairs. What can you do about that? That is something that is outside of your control. But should that stop you from doing what you have to do? No. Just, bear, just know that there are certain things that are outside of your control. So embrace those life uncertainties that will come along the pathway to your, to your destination. Unfortunately, many of us, we have lived under this, this, this old saying, better the devil you know than the devil you don't. Now, there's some wisdom in that. But the flip side to that is, it has become a yoke. It has become a barrier. It has become a hindrance to a lot of people and has stopped them from stepping out to something new, to something unusual, to something uncommon. Because, uh, no, I'd rather stay with the devil I know. Who, who wants to stay with the devil in the first place? No, don't let that hold you back. Don't let that devil you know and the one you don't know, don't let it hold you back. Where am I? All change, every change in life, whether positive or negative, they will bring discomfort in one form or another, in one form or another. All change. Everything change. Whether it's positive change or negative change, they will bring some discomfort with them. Because change in its natural state is, is, a, is, a, is a, a variation 
of the familiarity of something that is the, the norm. Now there is a difference to the norm. So there will be some there will be a sense of discomfort about it. But that discomfort is what is needed to birth you into the newness that you're going for. You cannot make an omelette without breaking an egg. The choice is yours. You want your egg to remain in your fridge or you want an omelette for breakfast. The choice is yours. But the change there from egg to omelette has to pass through this narrow path called discomfort. Unfortunately, it is this sense of the devil I know is better than the devil I don't know has made a lot of people to, to, to sleepwalk through their lives. To stay in a job that they don't like and it's not making them happy. To stay in, in, a, in a relationship that is choking life out of them. To keep doing the same thing that is not producing any result for them. Just because the devil I know is better than the one I don't know. And so people settle for the pain. The lack. The discomfort. The agony. The self. The, 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 the sense that is just draining you of your essence of who you are. So they settle for what is certain now because they are afraid of the possibility that they might end up with something worse if they should step out. Well, again, keep your egg in your fridge. There will be no omelette this morning for you. Because the question you must ask yourself is, at what cost? At what cost? When you discount the price of your inaction and your indecision, when you sell yourself out and settle for a life that is far smaller than the one you are capable of living, dreams will retreat. Passion will wane. Doors will be closed. Opportunities will come and go. Talents will go to sleep and life will just pass you by. All because you want to stay with the devil that you know rather than the one you don't know. Can I tell you the truth? A life, any life that is half lived is the ultimate tragedy in life. When you look back and you think, wow, I could have done more. I should have done more. I have the capacity to be more than this, but I was too afraid to do it. As I close, Action. Action is the most powerful antidote to fear. Some, I, read, I read a book some years ago that says, feel the fear and do it anyway. Feel the fear and still do it. The only way to rise above fear is to go right through the heart of fear itself. Go right through it. Go right through it. Every single day, bring your bravest set to your biggest challenge. Every single day, hold yourself in your most strongest power. Every single day, refuse. <coughs> Excuse me. Refuse to let fear dominate and rule your life. Choose to live your own life. Choose to make your own life. Choose to, to program your life. Because it's only then can you realize 
that you never needed to feel afraid to begin with. Because the courage that is needed, that is required, was in you all along. As I close, let me read this that I came across as I was preparing. It was written by somebody called Maggie Warrell. He said, Living by design means being intentional and clear about what you do each day. It's about taking a step back, polishing the lens through which you are viewing the world, challenging your perceptions, cross-examining your choices and reassessing your actions. It's about letting go of the fear that you are supposed to be anywhere else than where you are right now, but having the courage to be more deliberate about what you want for your future. Take a step back. Polish the lens through which you're viewing the world. Challenge your perception. Cross-examine your choices. Reassess your actions. But have the courage to be more deliberate about what you want for your future. When you do those things, when you do those things, you will not need to tell people that my 2020 was the best year. People will say, your, this year has just been your year. I can see that from January. Everything about you just was singing that this is your year. Thank you so much for being part of tonight's program. I hope you are going to take hold of some of the things that we've said tonight. Thank you, David. I hope you're going to just embrace some of the things that we've said tonight. And also, should you have, maybe you have a question, you're not sure about something I said or whatever, just inbox me or put a comment. I will respond on, on my Facebook or any of my social media. But let us make 2020 not just another year. Let's make it our year. And together, let us make this world a better place because there are better men and better women in it. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the week. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.